And one of my questions is actually, have you ever read The Vertical Diet by Stan Efferding? And how do you think it compares to the anabolic cookbook for bulking and cutting? One thing, this is actually a good introduction to one of my questions that so you asked me like what I eat. And one of my questions is actually, have you ever read The Vertical Diet by Stan Efferding? And how do you think it compares to the anabolic cookbook for bulking and cutting? So as far as how, as far as how I eat, when I'm trying to eat, if I was trying to gain, I would probably be doing more like vertical diet stuff because it's like stimulating of appetite. It's very like non-satiating to be honest. In a cutting context, what I'm doing right now, as I dip deeper into the deficit, my diet model starts to tip more into the Greg Doucette anabolic cookbook style relative to efforting, you know, get as much calories in or like, it's not like you're, it's not like you guys have a different approach to micronutrient intake, but it's that it's definitely that you have, you have so much variety that it's more about when you're trying to get lean. This is what I've always said is like, and I think people argue against your cookbook in this regard in terms of like micronutrients intake and like lack of fats and like shit like that is like when you're trying to cut, you're trying to be satiated, eating as much volume as possible. And there are limitations you're going to encounter in terms of hitting everything as optimally as you can. Once you get deeper into like the low 2000s, how can you hit every single thing perfectly when you're limited to such you know, like your, your main goal at that point is more to do with protein to preserve muscle and calories to be satiated. So you're not literally suffering all day. So like my diet model transitions more to, I still keep in the foods that are like high bang for your buck in terms of micronutrients, so like beef liver. I have like an ounce of beef liver every single day, regardless of how deep in a deficit I go. Cause that's like easy to fit into my diet. It's like, I don't know, like less than hundred calories or whatever it is. Um, but I start to dip more into like, add a protein ice cream in there, do, you know, maybe look at a low calorie wrap or something instead of what I was doing before the transition, you know, from to less red meat and more of, you know, a turkey or a chicken or this and look at some of the low calorie sauce options. That kind of stuff is like, how I eat is it's like literally like either it's not full vertical, and it's not full anabolic. It's sort of like a hybrid of the two plus my own additions for my specific needs. Like, like I have some genetic things that I've discussed on my channel before, like predispositions that make me need more choline than the average guy. So I will, you know, favor my diet accordingly and supplement accordingly. Um, you know, have things like liver and things that are very micronutrient dense that I thought are good additions. But that's the general approach to my diet is the deeper into the deficit it goes, the more your direction it skews. So it's not like I have anything really unique other than it's like your diet plus like if I'm cutting plus an assortment of like micronutrient things to kind of backfill any deficiencies I might have from having like a straight protein ice cream without like the micronutrients I would otherwise get from having potentially like another, you know, what fill in the blank meal if I was bulking sort of thing, if that makes sense. So anyway, like I, that was a bit of a spiel, but I know you probably get this comparison a fair bit compared to like, cause that's a pretty popular diet model, the vertical diet. And I think people have this misconception that I don't like your diet, which is not the case at all. I just think the context in which they're like, they excel is a little bit different. So I don't know if you want to like touch on that a bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've never read his book, but I'm quite familiar with it. And I think it's a great diet for somebody who can eat more, who can handle more food, who doesn't really want to have a very low body fat percentage. So if I ate his diet, I think if I was to be a power lifter and or a straw man competitor, and I could just go up and wait, maintain perhaps 15 to 20% body fat, it would make a lot more sense to eat the way I am. It doesn't make sense really for somebody that's trying to bulk up or to gain weight or somebody who's struggling to put on size. It's more of a diet that's for the person that wants to lose weight, which for the most part, I think in general, 95% of people are trying to lose weight versus maybe 5% are trying to get more body fat. Like not many people are too lean. So the problem with dieting is you're so hungry. So the biggest reason people fail on a diet, it's not really taste. It's not like I just craved the taste of a hamburger so bad that I went off my diet because you could have the hamburger. You could only just, you don't eat half of it. 
The problem is you're too hungry. So you eat half of a hamburger, you're not satiated, you're not full. So that's where my diet helps so much, I think, is that it's so much volume, low calorie stuff that it keeps you full. A lot of protein, which has a higher thermic effect, and it's more satiating than like carbs, which also are more triggering. You start eating some cereal and it's like, how do you stop? So I think that's the biggest difference between the diets is like Stan's diet is great. But for me, if I had to diet like that, I don't have the willpower anymore. I probably could have when I was younger. I don't have the willpower to just say no. Like if I had to eat like steak and rice and like just a bit of vegetable, it just wouldn't be filling enough. Like last night I had four bags of Smart Pop popcorn in the evening because I was like, if I had to eat steak, that's like 800 calories. If I had to eat steak and I would have to probably eat 1500 calories to have that same level of fullness or satiety. And so I eat foods that have a lot of volume. It takes me longer to eat like those just massive wraps each two to four a day. And it allows me to be full without that. I would not be able to maintain a lean physique year round. Like when I was younger, if you look back to my off seasons, it was more like 15, 17% body fat off season. Now I can maintain under 10 just because the foods are that much more um, filling. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I've noticed that's weird is it seems like my willpower when I was younger too, was like a disproportionately better. I feel like than it is now, like now I need those like diet hacks. If I'm going to actually try and get really lean, Back in the day, I could have literally ate 2,300 calories and suffered, literally sat in university classes, still worked out, still gone to my job, eating literally frozen chicken breast that I'd reheated, rice, and no, not even like spices or sauces because I thought it would like ruin my condition somehow. I would just like sit there and eat plain, the cheapest version of chicken, not even like good, like the frozen stuff you would get as cheap as possible. And I would eat that like a few times a day and that I would somehow like survive and be okay. Nowadays, it'd be like, I could never sustain that diet model. Yeah, man, the diets I followed when I was younger, there is no way I could do that now. Like, I don't know how I did yeah. it. I'm like back in the day, like friggin' pepper was like Mrs. Dash and then Mrs. Dash came out and it was like, Oh my God. And it was like, <laughs> I didn't have like anything like there's Walden farm syrups and chocolate syrups and all this stuff. I'm like, this is, so, there was no, I mean, I'm old, I'm 45. There was no protein bars when I was younger. And so there was, yeah. I was like, my first diet, I'm eating pasta, plain pasta. Cause I didn't know you needed protein to build muscles. This is some kid. So I'm like, well, I was a triathlete. So I just eating a lot of pasta. Come to find out you need protein. I'm going to the gym. Like what protein? Okay. Give me this protein powder. And it's some like milk and egg thing. And it tastes like garbage. You're trying to wolf it down. Now <laughs> foods are so delicious. They taste so amazing. We have these cookbooks with low calorie recipes and sauces and condiments and everything tastes so good. I'm like, you guys all have it easy. You don't realize what yeah. it was like 25 years ago. I mean, I already done 10 shows by then 25 years ago. So 25 plus years ago, when I was a kid trying to diet and not knowing anything, there was no YouTube. There was no this and that learning stuff. I didn't know how to do anything. I mean, I was going to show up to my first show with a speedos because I was on the swim team. And then a guy at the gym was like, Oh, you're competing. Oh, I backed out. Here's my, my suit. It was size large pink. And I'm like, okay. So I put size large pink posing trunks. I'm 142 pounds. And it's like baggy on me. It looks like I'm wearing a pamper. And that's what I went on. Cause I didn't know better. Like I was like, you have to shave. I'm like, I'm not shaving. Like to me, I was like, you know, as a kid, yeah. you're embarrassed. And I'm like, you have to tan. I'm like, I have pretty dark skin. And I mean, you knew nothing. So nowadays with everything out there, there's no excuses really. Like if you don't want to, if you're not, if you don't care enough about your body to lose weight, do something like you really, you just don't care enough about it. Cause there's so much information out there. You just have to try. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a, a common comparison I see between you, your diets. And I think it's, uh, it's definitely context specific and individual preference basically because at the end of the yeah day, and i don't think that my diet is like better than someone's it's just better for me because like yeah. it, my main focus is to be full and i get a lot of flack for the fat stuff and i'm like but i eat salmon on my diet every day like i'll have the yeah. smoked salmon i'm like y'all choose not to have the, the recipes that have fat and i'm not telling you to sit here and eat 10 grams of fat a day like well, that's yeah. your choice but if i sit here and eat a bag of nuts and stuff like that have like a lot of fat and peanut butter well that yeah. two tablespoons of peanut butter that's adding in a couple hundred calories in my protein shake that you just threw in there. I'd rather have another protein shake yeah. and I'm full. So you and have to kind of prioritize being full versus getting in your macros. 
And it's not like you're coaching the people who get your book too. So it's not like, it's not like you're there to tell them don't have like four protein ice creams a day for all your calories or whatever, like actually try and get some like the fat, you know, containing choices as well as this, as well as that. So if somebody's like fat deficient and then are complaining about it, it's like, we'll just like pick something that has fat in it. You still have to do like have some logical reasoning when you're deciding what you're going to include in your like final product of a diet model. Like the coaching doesn't come included. Like just, there's choices. I've seen the thing. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of choices. So. Yeah. You got to do it what you will. I mean, it's a tool. It's to help you. And for the most part, let's be honest, people aren't going to eat every single meal a day from the cookbook. They're going to eat like one or two meals from that. And then whatever else they're eating. If you yeah. add one meal a day, that's better than the freaking burger and fries that you have, that's going to be lowering calories to make a huge difference. So it's not about, you have to eat every single meal from this. Like I don't even eat every meal from the cookbook. I go to a restaurant, I'm out eating, I'm doing normal stuff. Like I'm probably the most normal, not normal bodybuilder that you'll ever meet. Like I think no bodybuilder is normal, but if there was a normal IP pro, I think I'm that guy. It's like, I go out to eat my friends. I go out to parties. I do normal stuff. Did you ever try shirataki noodles as a low calorie option? Yeah, I have them in the house. I like it. Oh, really? I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that was that was part of my recipe that I was going to submit, and I don't know. I don't. I didn't know if you had used that before. I hadn't. Yeah, seen it they're, they're it's awesome. I've I've used it in stir fries and different things like that. It's it's okay. great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are like almost zero calories. It's crazy. Yeah, I did like a top ten or top twenty five foods under twenty five calories, and that was like in in that list i forget though i didn't rank them in order but it was in that list for sure okay. so yeah one question that is interesting about the youtube or just the overall business stuff circling back to that where do you see yourself in five years i see myself doing